So now that uh, uh, Wojtek is on the line, let me yep. just uh, make a couple comments. This is Art Swift, President of Purple. Hi, Art. So, um, hello, everybody. Um, this is really exciting to have this discussion between uh, industry and the, and the community. So I'm really excited about where this work might lead. I want to mention that uh, the two newest members of Purple are uh, Soft at Home and ADB, who are represented here at this meeting. And they are transferring in from the Home Gateway Initiative, the HGI group. And they are the vanguard of uh, several other companies who will be transferring in. So I believe several of the major European car uh, carriers will be joining Purple uh, in the next few months as a result of the HGI transfer. And so we will be forming a separate small group, uh, which we'll call a carrier interest group. Uh, and Wojtek and his ADV colleagues will be involved with that, as, as will be the carriers. So I think what we'll get is a nice, concise uh, set of feedback coming in directly from this carrier interest group to the other working groups of Purple. So um, right now, we'll, you know, the TRO 69 work will go uh, as is, but later we'll be able to consolidate feedback from the carriers in perhaps a more organized way. So. Uh, hopefully that'll be good for everybody. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure you are aware that uh, several of the major carriers are expected to come in. And with that, Eric, over to you. Yep, definitely. Sounds good, Art. Thank you very much. I'm just going to share my screen uh, quick, and um, we will uh, we'll go from there. And again, apologies to everybody on the uh, issues with the conference bridge. Uh, we had not had these problems in the past with Fuse, so um, I'm, uh, I'll have to look into that. Um, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, if you can't see it, I apologize. Um, I've emailed it to the uh, purple open or the purple WRT list, which is at openwrt at lists.purplefoundation.org. Um, there's also an archive, so if you're not already in the list, you and you've and you missed the emails, um, you uh, you can uh, you can get that. Um, so, uh, thank you again. Also these, I'm going to record this meeting, um, kind of, it, it's just, it's just a way for people who aren't here to, uh, to kind of see what's going on. So, uh, again, thank you. Um, and there we go. Um, just the agenda, uh, is, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We're introductions, uh, background of how, the, how we got here. Um, I asked uh, Luca and Felix to do a presentation kind of on where they see this going forward. Luke and Felix, um, for those you don't know, they're, 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 have been on the OpenWT core team and Felix is involved with, with, uh, with the lead project. Uh, so they both have, um, you know, kind of, uh, they know this area and how it would work with OpenWT probably uh, better than anyone. Um, some presentations from Soft at Home and other attendees and um, the idea of a face-to-face -face meeting, which has kind of been uh, brought up a couple times, which I think is probably a good step forward. Uh, so introductions, uh, we're gonna have to do this kind of quick because we, we lost uh, a number of minutes. Um, just uh, say uh, who you are, uh, why you're here, and at the end of the project, what would you consider success? Um, I'll go with uh, Luca first. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Luka Perkov. As Felix said, I'm uh, involved in OpenWRT and uh, I'm here because I did already one uh, TR069 implementation called FreeCWMP and from technical point of view it wasn't the greatest one and uh, when Purple Foundation decided to uh, give some funding away, uh, I proposed uh, a new implementation called RocketCWMP and uh, I will be talking a bit about that uh, in a minute. And what I would consider a success is that we have uh, proper TR069 CWMP implementation in OpenWRT and that we have a community around it. Awesome, thank you, Felix. Uh, Matteo? Yep, so Matteo Carlini from ADB. I'm the responsible of the software development team for the CP that ADB delivers on millions of devices on field. We are here because we are uh, uh, really interested in 
the discussion on how to add carrier grade functionalities to the OpenWRT standard. Uh, and we would like to participate since our uh, commercial solution is based on an OpenWRT uh, stack. Awesome. Thank you, Matteo. Uh, uh, Mikhail, I believe, or, or Michael from, uh, from uh, Deutsche Telekom. Yeah, M Michael is uh, is fine. Um, okay. In Swedish, it's uh, Mikael. But okay. anyway, um, so I'm here from Deutsche Telekom, and uh, I've been uh, in uh, with a project called TerraStream, where we're looking at uh, how to manage uh, everything in the network. So not only um, this kind of home gateways. Um, so the the uh, the thing there is mo we want to drive everything towards netconf and yang, where yang I would say is the more important thing than netconf for for to configure everything. When I say everything, I literally mean everything. So uh, whilst uh, tier 69 is a big thing for, for DT in use right now, uh, over time, um, we, we probably would like to see an initiative to move away from that. But uh, I still I wanted to participate here to um, see what's going on and make sure that uh, or try to enable that transition in, in, in the future. Um, and while I've been talking to the BBF quite a lot about this too, with um, yeah, there are several here on the call that know about that. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Felix? Uh, yes, my name is Felix Vietkow, and I've been involved with OpenWRT development for uh, quite a large number of years now. And I've been responsible for designing uh, many, many of the components that we have in OpenWRT, including a large part of the user space. And I'm here because while my, my interest in TR69 was primarily for some customers, uh, for a company that I work with, but I decided to take on the issue of having proper support for it and for other remote management protocols in OpenWRT so we can finally get this settled. Because I've seen over time that there's so many different companies, some of them selling TR69 implementations, some of them doing their own proprietary implementations. And I would like there to be a standard way of interacting with the router, not just through TR69, but also through NetConf and Yang and all of these other protocols. And I see my job primarily to ensure that whatever we come up with here at this project, it integrates well with the system and it bridges the, the gap in development between the enterprise community and the, the wider OpenWRT and lead community so that we can find some common solutions because there are quite a few people uh, or quite a few communities that don't care about either TR69 or NetConf Yang. They really want something more lightweight and it would be kind of a waste if every single implementation would just be very isolated and had to redo all of the work of the other implementations. Thank you, Felix. No, I think that's great. Uh, Arjun, I believe it is. Arjun uh, Sugumar, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, Eric, uh, this is Jos Del Bar. So, so um, Arjun is, is one of our members of, of a technical uh, team. Uh, so I'll, 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 I'll be representing a few of, uh, of us uh, on the call today. So my name is Jos Del Bar from Technical. I'm software product manager. We're here today um, because we've been using OpenWRT in our commercial products for, for some years now. We want to contribute with our uh, TR69 implementation uh, on, one, on the one hand, but, but, but maybe most of all on the, on the framework side, we'd very much and, and, uh, like to come to an endorsed adopted framework within OpenWRT for remote management protocols, uh, as was mentioned by others on the call already, TR69, NetConf, and others. So, so that, would be, that would be a success for me that we come to uh, an evolution of the OpenWRT architecture, and that we find a good way for everyone to uh, to hook on their carrier grade scenarios and also the, the standard scenarios. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Joss. Um, uh, Barbara? Bar Hi, this is um, Barbara Stark. I'm with AT&T. Um, so uh, AT&T as a company is very interested in um, seeing open source projects succeed. Um, OpenWRT is an incredibly important project. Um, we use it a lot for prototyping and things like that just to understand what can be, you know, possible. Um, and so just kind of segueing from that, um, 
it, from, from a broadband forum perspective, since that's where TR69 comes from, I just want to make sure that you all have the support you need from broadband forum if you have any questions, if you think there are bugs, errors, things like that. Um, I'd like there to be open dialogue with the broadband forum people as, as much as you need because um, broadband forum is also now moving into the direction of um, working with the open source community. Awesome. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Geert? Yeah, so um, I'm Geert Kumar, also from Technicolor. Uh, basically, oh. I think uh, Jos already uh, explained okay. our, our, uh, our stake. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Uh, Jason Walls? Hi, uh, yes. Um, I'm actually with uh, QA Cafe. Um, we make a uh, CD router, which is a test product for, for connected devices. And uh, I'm one of the co-directors of the Broadband User Services Working Group at the Broadband Forum. Um, so we're basically in charge of making TR69 and some other things. Um, my main interest is in the integrity of the protocol and uh, having a standardized open source solution for that. Uh, so far, interestingly enough, with different people having already made some, um, some of them being not so good, some of them being great, uh, it's it's caused you know different feedback in the industry. So I just want to make sure that 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 you know that you, like Barbara said, you have enough support from us that uh, it all comes out well in the wash. And in addition to that, uh, it's good that we're starting to engage in this now. Um, at QA Cafe, I've actually worked with Luca before on. Uh, on some other integration with Open WRT, but just reaching out to this community on what we're going to be doing with the next version of Tier 69, which is coming out very soon. Um, it won't be called Tier 69 2. Uh, it's tentatively being called the uh, user service uh, platform. And it is the lightweight thing that you're looking for um, to kind of push out to these end devices and, and IoT devices and, and smart gateways and that kind of thing. Um, so having this relationship already in place, not only for tier six and nine, but for everything moving forward is, is a good idea. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Shalesh, Shailesh, I apologize. Hi, <laughs> right. Uh, I'm Shailesh Suman from Intel and uh, uh, yeah, a lot has been said and I recognize a lot of uh, uh, people from BBF where I, I as well go. So in Intel, we have been using OpenWRT as a CP SDK base for quite a lot of time. And um, uh, though we have in-house TR69 solution as of now, but we, we look forward for this community uh, uh, work to have this next generation TR69 as well as the uh, NetCon Tiang support. So we are very much in favor of uh, this work, which, has, which is getting initiated and uh, happy to be part of this. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, William? Yeah, hi, this is William Lupton. Um, I'm the software architect for the Broadband Forum. So basically trying to uh, assist in the sort of Broadband Forum's move towards generating more software um, deliverables that Barbara mentioned. I think apart from that, I, I won't say anything because I think Barbara and, um, and Jason and, and Shyla should have already said it all. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wojtek? Yeah, so I'm Wojtek Matowski from Soft at Home. Um, the reason we are here, uh, this is because Soft at Home uh, is a little bit special type of company. We are owned by service providers, uh, the Teltos. Uh, and we uh, provide software solutions for set-top boxes, home gateways, this kind of devices. Uh, and um, our company and our shareholders, all, we all think that um, we, we need a kind of community-based collaborative platform uh, based on open source regrouping uh, you know diff individual developers uh, industrial companies uh, service providers uh, organizations like bbf etc 
all those people that could uh, join the effort in order to have a, a, an open source solution that is suitable for the purposes of um, of carriers. So uh, my hope is that we'll find a way to collaborate all together. To collaborate means for me to, to contribute, to, to get contribution from all members of the community etc. So uh, to be more specific, uh, I think that probably the, the, the first, the most important thing that we have to do from the technical point of view is to agree um, about, you know, a, a way how the, 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 the software solution uh, for uh, home gateways um, should be organized around the kind of common framework, uh, software, bus, whatever, in order to sub and to expose them by whatever the, the, the access protocols are, whether it's TR69 as it is today, whether it will be NetConf, uh, TR69, D2, whatever. So that, that's, that's the goal for me uh, for today. And then I would really like at the, some point of time to get a deep, uh, involvement from chips and vendors too. Okay. Well, thank you, Wojtek. Thank you, Wojtek. Uh, Wooter, or Wooter, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that's fine. You can call me Walter, Walter, anything. Sure. Uh, if it starts with a W, I'll respond to it. And lots of people call me Wojtek, in which case uh, I won't. <laughs> Um, I also with Soft at Home. I work for Wojtek, and I'm the uh, software architect of the Gateway Solution. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. It, it, are there is there anyone else who hasn't hasn't introduced themselves? I apologize. There's some people on the phone that I, I can't see their names. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. This is Anand. This is Anand from Intel. Uh, okay. My my colleagues already introduced like what we are interested in. Okay. In addition to that. Um, you know, we, we, I just want to add one thing to my colleague's comments, and we are in favor of uh, open standards. So this is one of the reasons, like, you know, we are here to follow this uh, group activity. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I, Eric, I'll introduce my... Well, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Pasquale yeah. Bombino here. Oh, okay, sorry. Lady first. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, Kathy Jory here, and I... Uh, Used to be at Qualcomm with Theros, got, got the conversion of the router stack there, the SDK, to, to be OpenWT based. But now I'm at Arduino, and we also use OpenWT for some of the Arduino platforms that can run Linux, uh, either as a lightweight CPE, IoT CPE, or uh, uh, increasingly looking into building a IoT gateway or hub. And so I'm not so... It's, it's not that I have the great interest in tier 69. We don't actually use that, but just the protocols in general um, uh, with a lightweight stack still. Awesome. Thank you. And Kathy also is the uh, chair of uh, the uh, Purple WRT uh, group at Purple. So thank you. Okay, maybe I, it's my turn. So Pasquale Bombino uh, from ADB. So ADB is here because it's very interested in the open source community and especially in the OpenWT project. And we would like to, you know, better understand how to let it evolve toward a more career-grade solution. I agree and share the same comments that Wojtek just gave us. So we should be also focused on architectural and technical solution in order to better understand the best architecture possible in order in order to have the, the, the most suitable foundation for the overall next future evolution. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is there anyone uh, else? Yes. Hi. Yes. Hauke from Intel. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I'm also working on OpenWRT upstream and yeah, also Intel. I think Anand and Silas already introduced what we are doing. Awesome. Thank you. So this is uh, Tim Carey with Nokia. Again, I think you know some of what Barbara and others have already said, Barbara and Jason. Um, and so we're just looking at trying to improve the quality that uh, uh, that's in the open uh, WRT solutions, and also be able to 
uh, allow it to be used across multiple protocols like USB and you know, NetConf and such. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. It's a great turnout, and I really appreciate everyone everyone showing up for this and, and, and coming here. We're really excited to have all these people from such a broad range of, of groups involved. Um, next, uh, we have the, the – I just wanted to give the background. Of how did we end up into this into this place? Um, Purple was uh, was offering um, and is offering funding to uh, to fund OpenWRT uh, development, um, and we got uh, two separate requests from Luca Perkov of Satura and uh, Felix Fiatkow, um to implement an open source TR69 stack. They both either um, had implemented a stack before or in, in partially uh, in in had developed a stack and but had it been open source, uh, and they're both. Uh, core members of, of the OpenWRT team. So we're very happy about that. At the same time, after that, uh, Soft at Home offered to open source their tier 069 stack. And uh, Technicolor did as well. And on top of that, we also have the imminent creation of the carrier interest group at Purple. So it kind of the idea was, well, instead of funding um, just, you know, say Luca and Felix to completely start from scratch or or something along those lines, it kind of seemed to make sense to bring everybody together and figure out, well, what is the best way to integrate um, TR069 into OpenWRT and any sort of uh, interface standardization that's necessary. Um, so I think that's kind of the, just to give people the background about how we ended up here. Um, the next thing is I uh, I asked Luca and Felix since I mean they're they're the they're the technical people that know OpenWRT the best they they understand it as well as anyone I asked them to uh, short, do a short presentation about you know how do they see integration with OpenWRT working um, in general um, so I will uh, I will uh, show that on my screen uh, can everybody see that yes awesome I will. Make it bigger, but all right, uh, Luca and Felix, take it from there. Yeah. Okay. So we already made the the introduction, so we will skip that for now. What Felix and I will show you here is uh, <clears throat> what we feel would be the one of the possible ways to to move forward. And uh, yeah, let's let's start. Okay, you're okay. already on slide three. Okay, so okay. I've had uh, uh, the luck to work with uh, many management protocols, being uh, Tira 061 uh, as one of the first. Also, have been working on uh, NetConf Yang uh, implementation, Rinetong D, and now working on uh, another uh, Yang related project, uh, Sys Repo. And um, it's great for me to see a lot of. Uh, interest from the industry uh, in making this uh, thing standardized and uh, widely used. Um, what I can say uh, from, from my experience is that a uh, high-level problem with remote management protocols is that uh, the data models do not actually match uh, how things work on a device. So uh, this is basically the problem that uh, we are all solving uh, again and again. Um, so Felix will go into more technical details and explain uh, his proposal in a couple of slides. But uh, since there has been a lot of mention of uh, NetConf and Yang, I will just mention here a small sentence, and that is that uh, with the SysRepo project, we are trying to solve the remote management uh, challenge in a different way, where we want to like the end application developers to use the standardized. Uh, development model. So, but that's another story. Just, just to share this with you. Um, Felix also mentioned uh, he had uh, looked into the technical proposal, and uh, he said that um, it's very similar to what he has described. So, as an action items at this point, uh, what Felix and I uh, have seen is that uh, maybe to use Felix's implementation as a starting point. Felix was very strong uh, about that. And uh, to review other implementation as 
they become available and uh, of course we are welcome to to get any feedback on this area um next slides please okay one more so okay so in what are the core cwmp features uh, that uh, proper cwmp implementation should support uh, in a nutshell cwmp is a easy protocol let's call it like that the hard part is in the mapping between all the different uh, data models and the things how they work on the device as mentioned earlier so CWMP implementation should obviously support get set parameters, uh, add delete objects, uh, firmware upgrade, backup restore configuration, support for notifications, active and passive, uh, proper error handling, and uh, to have some proper performance results. Um, Felix and I uh, were wondering uh, if somebody can share from the industry point of view, like, what are the real world performance and um, requirements and uh, some experience just to open the discussion regarding the CWMP implementations? Uh, one comment from ADB side. Well, mm -hmm. uh, in real world, mm, Commercial ACS normally do have some kind of timeouts uh, for whatever operation you perform with your CWMP running on your device. And this typically affects a get full operation. So reading the entire data model of a CPE normally should stay under a threshold that is ACS dependent, but um, we have some example like 30 seconds yeah. is a typical timeout example, and you have to provide the entire full device configuration with all the relevant dynamic parameters within that period of time. This is just one example. Okay. Another example uh, could be the, um, the rest of time to connection request before the, the, the agent uh, contacts back the ACS with uh, the connection request info, which uh, some ACS vendor could ask to be within uh, uh, within second, within one second or, uh, uh, for example, uh, 500 milliseconds, something like that. Okay, so thank you. So there will be definitely but, some. Hey, hey guys, but I, you know, I, I just want to say typical, you know, while there might be a 30 second timeout right, for some very big things, but typical you're running, you know, less than five seconds, right? So you get these requests all through, you know, the typical stuff if you want to go get point solutions. So if, you, if you're using 30 seconds as your, uh, uh, as your typical, you're probably going to uh, not do well. Well, that depends a bit. Uh, the example that was given was getting the entire data model with all parameters in them. I don't know how big the data models of you guys are, but if we were to completely fully map our entire data model, it's over 20,000 items. Oh, I know, I know. That's what I mean. You, you, get, you gave the worst case, right? I'm just saying the typical that you see, right, should be less than five. You know, which if you're going down and just saying, hey, you know, I want to know this person's, you know, uh, wireless uh, setup, right? You know. Correct. The, the typical cases that we see from ACS is that there are very specific scripts to do particular provisioning or, or to get particular information, and it's very close. It's just uh, a couple of short transactions or even a single transaction and uh, and end again. For the ACS vendors, it's also very important if you're managing millions of devices and you need to sweep over all of them, you really cannot afford to wait uh, 30 seconds or a minute, minutes per device. Uh, that, that really takes it from a, a, a sweep from a few hours to, to several months uh, if, if, you're, if you don't uh, adhere to that, which is somewhat tricky because the protocol itself is not too efficient. Uh, SOAP is, is rather heavy. 
Um, that used to be a problem in the old days with our gateways with a 200 megahertz uh, CPU. Nowadays, I don't think that's such a big issue anymore. The problem is more if the fetching the information from the backend uh, logic on the device, on the CPE itself, if that takes a long time, then you typically have a problem. I hope that nobody's uh, PR69 client implementation in, in itself has a performance problem anymore today. Okay, so uh, Felix, will you take over? Sure. Um, please go to the next slide. Um, okay, so before I go into detail on that, because I don't know if you're all familiar with the proposal that I made at the last presentation, I'm going to summarize the, the key points of the design of my implementation. I intentionally uh, made, uh, made the decision to completely separate the front end and the back end of the TR69 implementation and basically have the back end be an abstraction layer to deal with the impedance mismatch between the way that the router deals with its configuration and the particular data, data model that people use. Um, and this is, this is something I've, I've seen with many implementations uh, that some even don't use the standard TR181 or whatever data models of the TR69 implementation uh, in, a, in a standard way, because, and, but because of some limitations in there, they tend to use vendor-specific extensions, which sometimes vary by ISP or sometimes vary by router implementation. And I've decided to make it as easy as possible to support a big variety of configurations there while also being prepared for the future when new remote management protocols show up. It was very interesting for me to learn that there's a, going to be a successor for the TR69 standard, which will be more lightweight. And I think the, the proposal that I'm making here is, is very suitable for that. Because uh, the, the backend design that I made is not just intended to make it very easy to abstract away the differences in data models, it's also designed to be extremely fast and with very low footprint. So it's built almost entirely in C and it's, I think it, it compiles to something like less than 30 kilobytes compressed, but it uh, allows you uh, some, some powerful abstractions. So you can basically um, describe in a, in a data model kind of way, what, how, the, how the configuration on the router maps to the configuration on, on the uh, TR69 data model. You don't even, for, for most of the parameters that you add, you don't even need to write any scripting code. You don't need external languages. You don't need to call any shell programs or anything. Uh, there's a mapping there where you basically describe this configuration parameter or this call on the system bus or this file on the file system maps to this particular parameter. And then there's a language uh, allowing you to, to filter these things. And in, the, in that way, uh, I've, I've only so far implemented a basic TR69 client based on this abstraction, but I've already tested it with uh, things that work completely without the TR69 protocol. So for instance, there's a command line utility that allows you to actually test all the parameters of your data model abstraction. So you don't need to run a full, ses uh, full session you can do things in a kind of unit testing way by simply writing your JSON, testing it in the command line. And if it works there, then you can be reasonably sure that it will work in the full stack setup as well. And it's all based around uh, making it very, very simple to reuse code and uh, to, be, uh, to be really fast and really non-intrusive. And um, now go to the next slide, please. So this was only added for people that are familiar with the, the previous presentations. Uh, this, I, um, the design that we've come up with here today is based around my implementation because we've, uh, we've decided that uh, there needs to be something that supports the full ecosystem of different kinds of configuration, different data models, different front end protocols, and uh, to make this as easy as possible. 
And this is an improvement over the previous implementations that were available as open source so far. So next slide, please. Um, as I described earlier, the management backend is split into three parts. It has a library, uh, actually four parts. Uh, there's also a, a server process in there to allow privilege separation, which uh, kind of matters if you want to add security to the whole picture. So there's the, the server implementation, uh, which handles all the requests. There's a, a library that uh, reads the data model files and allows you to use the necessary abstractions. And then there's the individual data model mapping files, which you can do per protocol or even per vendor if you want to. And uh, so you can do kind of a mix and match with that. Uh, to the next slide, please. So my plan for all of this, uh, which, which I hope will, will get funded ba based on the meeting here, is I want to complete this backend implementation to make sure that it matches the requirements of all the different uh, all the different interested parties that are that are present here, to ensure that this this can be used for people that are interested in other protocols that it, this can maybe be adapted to uh, to connect to other uh, maybe more mature uh, tier sixty nine front end implementations while sharing code with, with the other implementations. And I also intend to do a lot of research based on the, ven uh, the code that uh, vendors have committed to open sourcing here. So I wanna make sure that I basically review all of the existing implementations that I can get my hands on, take all the best ideas in there, and just uh, with the, the help of other people involved, make one implementation that incorporates all the useful aspects of those. Then there will be a, a lot of work on actually implementing all the parameters that we want to support. I don't think we'll start out by implementing all of the 20,000 parameters that were mentioned a few moments ago. Uh, we need to start somewhere with, with a proof of concept. Um, and I, I don't know if uh, standard OpenWRT even needs to have 20,000 different parameters supported. I think it depends more on what kind of packages you actually have. And there's a lot of vendor specifics there as well. So the, the architecture that I'm proposing is actually also designed in a way that you don't need to ship the client with all the parameters that you ever intend to support. You can even split it up on a package by package basis. So if another vendor of a, of a third party package for OpenWRT comes along and decides we want support for TR69 and for NetConf Yang or for whatever other protocol uh, with this particular extension to OpenWRT. They can just ship it with the necessary data model abstraction files. And once it's installed, it automatically uh, shows up on those management protocols. And I fully intend to make sure that this, this will be as reusable as possible so we can really uh, have a unified approach here. Hey, uh, this is Tim Carey. I'm sorry, I'm on the uh, on the phone call, but I just want to, as you're going through, I, I'd like to make just a, a comment if I could. Sure. Um, when, when you when you start talking about uh, slicing the abstraction layer up, right? You know, in terms of um, uh, the abstract, uh, in terms of the data, the data model or the functions. Yes. Uh, there's a couple things that you're going to need to consider, right? There's the slice of the um, uh, of, of the abstraction layer that uh, when you deal with uh, referential integrity and cross you know uh, cross checks and stuff like that between two elements simple stuff is to get set stuff right but when you start talking about uh, the business rules for how uh, two or three or four elements uh, uh, interoperate there's the standard abstraction but then there's also you, you'll see that as you come down through there that uh, based upon the protocol that you use that interfaces with the abstraction layer, you're going to have a uh, maybe some particular uh, logic that goes uh, to that particular protocol, right? Uh, right? Above and beyond the reference piece. So, you know, there's the common get set, right? Which says, you know, I have I, I deal with this, you know, Wi-Fi module, right? You know, and maybe the Wi-Fi module is even broken down into further uh, pieces depending upon how you do stuff, right? Right. Uh, and then, so there's abstraction that deals with that. There's abstraction that deals with 
with how it relates to other elements within the um, uh, within the uh, the system, and then there's abstractions that deal with, uh, with with particular protocols themselves and how they interoperate. You know, the data model itself of a particular protocol. So, right. you know, when you do your packaging and splicing, that you know, take into account uh, as I'm as, as I, I'm I'm used to. You take into account those those elements. Right. I, I've I've already uh, implemented some of uh, some of the standard of the of T S with this with this kind of abstraction layer that I have here. Uh, so I've already encountered some uh, pretty strong differences in abstraction between the tier sixty nine way of doing things and the way that OpenWRT is being configured. So I of course the abstraction will not will not be perfect on the first try. Uh, but I intentionally designed it in a way that even very strong differences in abstraction can be taken into account. Like there, for for tier 69, there's lots of very different kinds of multi-instance objects that map to various things of the of the same type, where the the actual objects on the OpenWRT side are organized in a different way. And I've uh, made a um, very flexible selector language there to allow you to abstract that away without even have to, having to write much code. Yeah, and also, but there's the back end of that thing is when you start doing packaging, right? You know, so if I take a package that says I want to include, you know, Wi-Fi, right? Mm -hmm. um, what are the what are the fragments of that package that deal with the abstraction layer, and which of the fragments are uh, the package deals with like TR69 if I want to include TR69 for Wi-Fi, right? That type of mm -hmm. stuff. Right. Hi, hello, Pasquale here from ADB. Uh, I would like to to add my comment here as well. So, sure. uh, first of all, okay, it seems to be interesting. That's that's for sure. In a way, my my comment is that before start in you know. Uh, discussing and implementing modules and functionality, we should ins instead start to you know discuss and be focused on the best way to build or to architect the overall software. I mean the the overall core of the software that can be called the configuration manager, can be called you know the bus or whatever, because this is the the key. Aspect of the middleware. This is the, the real core of the of the of the middleware as well. Then concerning the future models that can be TR069 or any other kind of model, the HP, DNS, or whatever services we want to add on top, this must be done following certain rules, following certain architecture rules and definition. So, of course, there. Could be several way to you know to build a, a debus in a different way depending on also what can be provided by OpenWRT by the chipset vendor manufacturer and and, and and so on. But I think that before starting or still going ahead founding this specific and vertical development for a specific model, we should in, instead start discussing. And maybe let me also propose to have quite soon a face-to-face -face meeting, technical meeting, in which we should try to discuss and you know define the key architecture, the foundation, the baseline architecture, because this is the the, the, the key aspect. Then, of course, anyone that can be soft at home, can be ADB, can be technical, or can be whoever is the company, may have its own solution, its own module and feature. Good or bad, it doesn't care. But the most important is to have a well-defined architecture of the core of the middleware. I really think and I really propose to focus on that specific discussion and agreement first. That's my, 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 my comment here. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure with, uh, when we're talking about OpenWRT where uh, you draw the line regarding the middleware. So uh, I, I see there, there are probably some things in OpenWRT that are right now considered core that uh, may need some, some evolution in terms of, to, of better supporting 
um, the various standards that are required by the more uh, enterprise type customers. Um, at the same time, the, the proposal that I'm making here, and it's, uh, I think this is something, it's not going to be fi finished on the first try, but I think we, we need to start with, uh, with a technical proposal that is simple enough uh, to, to serve as a, as a discussion starter with all the relevant parties. This is really designed around the concept that we can, we can let the core evolve in a direction that is more suitable. Uh, and at the same time, follow up or follow along with that evolution by having the necessary abstractions to be able to support the various different uh, protocols on the management side as well. And this is designed to make this uh, its evolution on both sides as easy as possible. And yeah, I fully realized that this, when I, when I build something like this, this will see some significant changes once we start having a, uh, face-to-face -face meetings once we start uh, uh, incorporating more suggestions on, on collaboration there. Um, but I think we still need to have a, a, a technical starting point that is simple and clear and that we can build on. And this is what I'm proposing here. Hello, yes, clear, of course. What I was also, you know, proposing is that um, everyone has faced several different problem or issue during the, you know, uh, the integration, development, uh, and usage of mm. models, middleware, or whatever into into the real field, right? Into the real cases. Yes. And and so if we really want to evolve the OpenWRT in a more career grade solution, I think that we should start putting on the table. What was what were were the, the the most critical issue we were facing? How we resolved them? What was the best implementation or architecture that we we put in place in order to you know have a career a real career grade solution that can be used and is actually used in millions of in field devices? Okay, because, because otherwise my my fear is that we may start to do something on a not so career grade yet solution as a, as, a base, as a baseline. And this can give us maybe an headache later on. That was my simple question. Uh, I don't know what all the other participants may think this on this. Is right. I, this is right oh, sorry this is there. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to cut this off, yeah. but we actually are at the end of our meeting time. Um, I really apologize. Uh, I we haven't obviously gotten through the entire entire meeting, but uh, what I what do I propose is that if it's all right with everyone, we have another meeting next week at the same time, um, and that we continue this discussion because I, I think you, you're bringing up some really good things, and I think one of the things we should do at that meeting is really set a time for the first face to face i i assumed we were going to were going to get to that by this meeting but clearly we didn't have the time um, okay but since you know i was put in this you know this these topics and i i heard that voitech want to add some comments let yep. at least voitech give us his comment first and then Absolutely. we can thank you and i would i would like to propose i mean if it's not a problem for at least most of the people like to continue for at least half an hour or yeah, I, it, it would yes. work for me i don't know for the others yeah i, I, I actually it. moved some things in, in ex expectation that this might run over so uh, guys my, my suggestion is that um maybe the most important things uh, is to agree on the face-to-face -face meeting and then those that are can uh, Follow the discussion can can continue. Basically, I fully agree what uh, Pasquale said that uh, real life uh, feedback regarding the, the implementation of GR69 should be used on what we will design. So that that's absolutely key. Uh, everybody that implemented the real life um, solutions knows that between what is you know specified and what is required in the field, there is a gap and we should fill this gap with our experience instead of trying to resolve it again and again with a new type of experience. So that, that's my point. 
So when you when you guys say face to face, I assume you're you're meaning having a face to face between kind of the team that you guys have already formed, or are you looking for something a little bit more broad in scope? It, it's not so, defined. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bring that up because um, very conveniently, uh, the next broadband forum meeting is in Berlin right after the ITF, and that's the last week in July. And I would, I would be certainly interested, especially since you guys could come and kind of talk about uh, the next version of TR69 as well with us. Uh, but it would be very easy for us to set aside some time during that meeting to have uh, a face-to-face -face conversation. You know, the problem with the meeting at the end of July is that in Europe, uh, Many people are on holidays at that. Oh, time. it's true. My, we've, we've already my, we've already crossed that argument with some people, but it is what it is yeah. at this point. <laughs> so my personal feeling is that we have to, if possible, to have this face to face meeting uh, in the beginning of July, that the latest, and before we will probably need another call or two to prepare it in a good way. But I think that the, today we should try to to plan uh, this face-to-face -face meeting, if you agree. I, I okay, think that's okay, a great okay, idea. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so uh, as uh, some of you know, I, I suggested to, to organize it in, in Paris, in soft atom uh, premises. Uh, not only because it's convenient for me, but also because I think that Paris has the advantage of being the place where there is a lot of uh, direct flights from different parts of Europe and the United States. Uh, so that was the idea to, to organize it in Paris, but then we will be able to organize it at other meetings later in, in, uh, in other places. So that, that was my, my offer. I I, th I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I I suggested uh, because of the half of the reason you mentioned because it's convenient to you to have it in in Zagreb where I am, but I cannot <laughs> take the second argument <laughs> that is the uh, connectivity. So I I think that that'd be a great idea, Wojtek. Um, do we want to agree on a date or do we want to just uh, put that off till the meeting? Um, you know our our this meeting next week to decide on the date or or what what do you think? I would prefer I would prefer to discuss about this today because you okay. know normally the more uh, the, 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 if you discuss it with enough um, if you discuss it in the very last moment usually there is always a lot of problems to get everybody of course available so absolutely if we maybe can do we that should do today, a, a doodle better or today today Okay, so uh, are there any particular suggestion? Maybe we should uh, try to define only a particular week and then to open, uh, what's the name, Doodle uh, type of uh, um, can, we, can we can the we only, the only reason, sorry. Can we start by just defining of how many days do we think is needed? I think one day could be not enough. <clears throat> just to get that settled first, and then we can. Mm. So I suggest to, to try to say that there will be one day with the possibility to, to extend it a little bit. I would propose at least two days because, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay, yeah. I have no problem. Maybe, maybe of at, at least to slip over some new uh, yeah. lessons that <laughs> you learn, everybody will, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, guys, what do you think about the first full uh, week of July? I mean, from 4 to the two to 8 of July. I personally would like that it's not the first week of any month. Um, maybe, but okay, if it's okay with everybody, it will work for me too. Yeah. Pasquale here. For me, it's okay. No, I don't have any specific problem if it's the first or the, or the second. 
I will be out for business trip in US uh, the week starting from the 18th of July. So okay. for for the rest is it's okay for me. Personally, the, the the week after I'm going for holidays far far away. So, uh, <laughs> <coughs> so this, is, this is art for the Americans yeah. in the audience. The July Fourth week is often a holiday week, so I I might suggest the week prior would be better. Okay, but in this case, for me, it should be the beginning of the previous week. What do you think about that? I mean the 27, 28. Oh, from June. Oh, I, oh no, in it's, the wrong direction. It's June, yeah. June, yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, it, it's fine is with everybody me. okay with that? Huh? Mm, 27, I could maybe make it work. 28 would work better as a starting point. I'm not sure on my end. I would have to check, but could work. Hey, if you guys want to meet in Amsterdam, we'll already be there. <laughs> There's the <a> TNO Broadband <laughs> Conference. <laughs> yes, I know that. This is why I said that the beginning of the week is better. <laughs> I'm I'm not key, but okay, I will so, be at a. Uh, if uh, my team... Okay, guys, so uh, maybe what we could do, uh, Eric, if you could um, propose a, a doodle uh, stuff just to be sure yep. that the 27 and 28 are okay for, um, I would say, a critical mass of participants. Mm -hmm. And then I will, uh, I would like to know how many people would come uh, just to reserve the necessary facility. Is you know the, the a, a meeting room big enough and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, may, may I also suggest that we have a, you know, pretty good remote participation um, capabilities. Yeah. Uh, the, the, that would be excellent because uh, that would help uh, yeah. a lot for the Absolutely. people who can't be there physically. Absolutely, uh, I, I fully agree. Yeah, that's great. All right. Well, I, I mean, I think that seems like like a good step forward. I will. Uh, I'll send out the doodle uh, later today, um, just to just to see, and I'll send it to all you know all the lists we okay. normally send to. Hey guys, just to, just to, just to let you know that you know if 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 those are going to be the dates, we really have to do this somewhat quickly because um, otherwise, no travel, right? Because people haven't booked travel yet. Yep. Usually, we're under constraints, like three weeks. And if, if it does, I, you know, I, I, I do want to throw that out there again. I realize that people's vacations are starting the end of July, but a significant number of us will already be at that broadband forum meeting. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. Will you come also to the ITF or only to the week after? Uh, some, some people are also going to the ITF. I won't be, but. But I mean, I will be, for example, and I'm sure both Barbara and Tim will be. Okay, because I know some of us are going, including myself, to ITF. That could be a that could be a possible follow up meeting as well, though. Yeah, yeah, we That's should fun. certainly meet. Yes, and Mikhail, I'm sure, will be there. Yes, absolutely. I'll be there. Uh, yeah, the, the, including the previous the weekend uh, for the hackathon as well. So I'll be there uh, Friday to Friday. All right, so we will. Um, I will send out the uh, the doodle, and we can um, on the twenty seventh and twenty eighth, and we'll have to close it like uh, tomorrow. So I, I will send it out this afternoon. I have some things this morning, but um, just please fill it out as soon as you can, and then we can we can decide if whether that is that's going to be acceptable Eric, for maybe everyone. Let people, Eric, maybe let people to answer uh, on Monday too. You know, because okay, it's a weekend, so. Absolutely. We can, we can do Monday then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. J just to be clear. So we are work, uh, voting on 27 or, and 28, or we are voting on uh, starting on 27 and starting on 28. So the goal was to start it on 27, but to, uh, the doodle was rather to check how many people will, will be able to join. Okay. Yep. 
but uh, like for me, it also would work, and for Felix, maybe that we start on 28, so like just to put the starting weights as well, to have at least some voting um, stuff done. Okay, if, if you wish, yeah. Yes, okay, we'll do that. Also, if you have a location, that would help as well for, for people to understand, right? Yes, that would, that would be it. It would be at at soft at home. Uh, I think is is the intent. Don't know where that's at, but okay. In Paris. In Paris. In Paris. Uh, yeah, in Paris. Okay. Are we still going to do a uh, another call next Friday? Yes, absolutely, okay. and we'll we'll be in yeah. touch uh, between now and and obviously the next meeting on all the various lists. So uh, again. Uh, probably the easiest way to, to keep in touch is to join the uh, Purple WRT list. Um, it's uh, openwrt at lists.purplefoundation.org. You can join it at lists.purplefoundation.org. Um, easy to subscribe to. It's just a mailman instance. Um, are there is there anything else that we need that we want to talk about right now? Ed? Not necessarily. All right. And All right. Well, okay, then, great. awesome. We will uh, we will be in touch. And thank you again for everybody joining. This this has been absolutely great, and I'm excited to have all these people, everyone involved like this. Great. Right. Talk to you, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice bye. weekend. Bye bye. bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay. What the f-